Okay, y'all. <laughs> Here we are, back at it for another addition to the uh, Stand Up Special Tuesday. You know what I mean? That variety. That's what we're doing today. Welcome back to Eddie B TV. I am, of course, Eddie B. Nice to see y'all. And we are back at you again today for another reaction video and uh, another addition, like I said, to uh, Stand Up Special Tuesday. You know? I, uh, I did some organizing on my playlist, so I'll go ahead and check that out if you guys want to uh, <clears throat> indulge in some stand-up special reactions. But yeah, we're going to get into another one today. And uh, this special is going to be from someone that we have not gotten into before. And uh, this guy's name is Roy Wood Jr. Okay. Well, um, I have seen uh, a few things of uh, Roy Wood in them. Um, i seen him on, like, I think it was... Uh, Trevor Noah show on uh, Comedy Central, and uh, I also know that he, um, uh, he's on like the intro to the whole "This Is Not Happening" thing on Comedy Central too. Uh, I know he does a lot of stand up, but I haven't uh, haven't had the luxury of getting into uh, a lot of his stand up. But we're gonna check one out from him today. And the title of this special is going to be "No One Loves You." Oh damn. Sounds kind of harsh, you know, but hey, it's the name of a special, so there's going to be some uh, significance to that title as uh, the special goes on, I imagine so. And uh, yeah, we're going to get into it, like I said. And uh, this special was uh, uh, suggested to me by one of my very loyal subscribers, and I'm going to shout her out today, the, uh, the beautiful, the kind, the very funny, Miss Ema Catherine Maya. Thank you so much for um, uploading this one for me, and uh, when I'm... When I'm done doing this one, man, you guys, I'll give you the links in the in the description and go ahead and check it out by yourself if you don't want to hear me yakking the whole time. But uh, yeah, man, we're going to get into this one, like I said. So thank you very much, uh, Miss Ema Catherine Mai. I very much appreciate it. And uh, thank you for continuing to uh, tune into the channel. I very much uh, appreciate that. Yes. So let's go ahead and get into it. Like I said, Roy Wood Jr. with the No One Loves You, part one of this stand-up comedy special. And if you like this reaction, please like, comment, and subscribe to your boy. Keep everything going. All right. So, uh, yeah, man, I said I was going to keep this whole thing going. And um, I got some more specials in line to get to, you know. Keep the suggestions coming, you know, if you guys want to see something uh, for yourself, you know. Hopefully it's something I haven't seen before. But, uh, yeah, man, we're going to get into this one. Let's do it. Roy Wood Jr. with No One Loves You, part one of this stand-up comedy special right here on Eddie B TV. Stand-up special Tuesday. Let's have fun with this one. <clears throat> and thank you one more time, Miss Ema Catherine Maya, very much so. All right, let's get situated with this one, and here we go. If you want more people to stand for the anthem, oh. change the song. <laughs> okay. That's half the problem right there. It's just the lyrics to the anthem. We can stand to any song. Patriotism is a feeling. Let's not forget that. Patriotism ain't no one song. For as long as we stand and agree that people died for us to kick it, we can do that to any song. You can do that to Bruno Mars. What's more American than Bruno Mars? Yeah, that's true. They say America is a melting pot. Well, damn it, I want to stand to Bruno Mars. He literally looks like every race at the same time. <laughs> okay. What's better so. than that? What's more American than us standing with a Hawaiian, Mexican, white, lesbian, Jewish man? It's stupid. <laughs> to honor the troops. Oh, man. That's nuts. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise as we sing our national anthem, 24 Karat Magic. <laughs> Remove like your hats song. and put your pinky rings to the moon at this time. <laughs> you mad about the damn anthem, man, please. Let's be real about the anthem. First and foremost, the beat 
is whack. It don't go hard. You love America, but you ain't downloaded the national anthem to your phone. That's true. If you was at the club and the DJ started playing the national anthem, you'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with this DJ? <laughs> you ain't at the DJ booth. Hey, man, play some of that patriotism shit. That's what I like. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Not hearing that. I understand it's supposed to honor the country, but here's the thing people forget about the national anthem. It ain't even an original song. It ain't original. It's based off a British song. It's the exact same as a British song song and that's what you want people to step up first of all imagine that imagine whooping another country ass getting your freedom and then to celebrate your freedom you write a freedom song based on the song of the country ass you just whooped <laughs> that don't even make no sense no nope. you now and now you run around telling stolen people in a stolen land that they should stand for a stolen song come on bro that ain't how the game go I like how you put that, you made some good point. Plus, just be real about it, white people. Y'all came at black folks the wrong way. You had bad marketing. If you wanted black people to stand for the anthem, all you had to do was tell us that it was a remix. <laughs> okay. That's all you had to do, tell us it was a remix. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please stand to the remix of National Anthem. Featuring Puff Daddy and the family. <laughs> and Francis Scott Key. Remix! Either that or made a dance to it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, say. Hand over your heart. Hand over your heart. Everybody salute the flag. Like that. <laughs> Black people are standing for me. Man, I love doing the freedom slide. Don't you like the freedom slide? <laughs> the freedom yeah, yeah. slide. Hand over the heart and the salute and the flag. <laughs> Yeah, you do that freedom slide, boy. I think you just invented something here. I think so. The anthem ain't even the most disrespectful thing happening at a football game. The most disrespectful thing is when they bring a troop out, let us clap for them, and paint the illusion that they actually care about the veterans. That's the real BS. Yeah, yeah, Every yeah. game they do that, right? They, 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 bring a, they bring a troop out, let us clap for them, but they don't want to talk about the, the, the issues affecting the troop. They bring them out. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to turn your attention to the field as we welcome home Lieutenant Colonel Commander, 5th General, Submarine Driver. <laughs> um, he's braver than your bitch ass. Clap for this hero. <laughs> and we clap as we should. Yeah, yeah. But you ever notice, Whenever they bring a veteran out at a football game, you ever, you ever notice we give them a round of applause, they give them good seats. <laughs> the one thing they never give them is the microphone. Oh, okay. You can't do that. Okay. Just once, just once, I'd love to see a vet just snatch the mic from the PA announcer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this brave hero. Can we talk about the VA and the homeless? Get the fuck, get your ass over. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. Let's now please rise and put your pinky rings to the moon. Uh-oh, one more time. As we sing Bruno Mars. <laughs> uh. Stand for the anthem. You need to stand for that goddamn anthem. That's what they tell you, right? You need to stay. You know how many people trying to get in this country right now? <laughs> this thing, what you're not going to do is tell me how to voice my disapproval with something. You can't tell nobody how to complain. That don't even make no sense. Yeah. Like, this is how you got to think about it. This is the only way I can try to explain and make it make sense. This is how you got to think about it. America is basically a restaurant. America is a restaurant that sells equality. That's all it is. They serve oh. equality. And some of y'all had some delicious equality. It was good. You had great service. And some of us need to speak to a manager. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. You telling black people to stand for the anthem, that's the same as walking around Applebee's telling people not to complain about their food. How you get to dictate how somebody else complain about their situation? You may as well just walk around Applebee's. You need to be happy that you even in this Applebee's. You know how many people outside trying to sneak in this Applebee's? We had to build a wall around this Applebee's. Uh-oh. Not 
be like, yo, man, you need to calm your ass down. Get your facts straight. First off, uh -oh. I was at Red Lobster minding my business. <laughs> Y'all brought us to Applebee's. <laughs> Applebee's has rats. <laughs> Chicago, how you doing? Oh, Chi-Town, man. Shout out to Chi-Town, baby. Good to see y'all, man. Good to see y'all. Good to kick it in the shy. Yeah, yeah. Had to come. Had to come kick it with y'all, man. I was in them, in them trenches with my brother U.S. Floyd walking around. His brother intervenes with gangs in the fucking city, man. My brother's right here in the building, man. U.S. Floyd. Hey. Now he's dressed like a pimp, so let's excuse that. <laughs> But in the streets on the south side, the brother gets respect. Yes. He gets yes. respect. Much respect, and old school. Much respect. What he does is meaningful work, man. I had to, that, that changed my whole perspective of the world. I saw what he does every day, walking up to gangbangers who mad at other gangbangers. You know how much you got to care about the world? <laughs> to go calm down a stranger? Hey man, I know something just happened. I know you're ready to murder, but don't murder. <laughs> yeah, don't do that, please. Hey man, don't murder. All right, good job. I'm gonna turn my back on you now. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll back up slowly, y'all. I will. <laughs> yeah. I will. yeah, I ain't gonna turn my back on no. I don't guns. know what we gonna do between us and the police. This shit is getting hard. Every day, police might get called on you while you're trying to get coffee. <laughs> police might get called on you while you're trying to do barbecue. Mm. Police might get called on you while you're trying to mow the yard, take a nap, sell some water. At this point, if you black, the safest thing you can do every day is just call the police on yourself. <laughs> I mean, the white people gonna call anyway, so you may as well take the power back. Control oh. the narrative. That's what I'm gonna do every day. Call the police and compliment. Say something nice about yourself. Oh, okay. What Change you the perception. 911, what's your emergency? Ain't no emergency. It's just a smooth motherfucker headed to Walgreens. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Just checking in. <laughs> I like that. Red jacket, white pants. Don't shoot me. <laughs> Call unit be advised. Male black Walgreens. Respond code. I don't know. I don't know what, the, what I don't know what you do. Move too slow, you might get shot. Move too fast, you might get shot. Don't move, you wasn't obeying commands, you might get shot. I don't know. Yo, at this point, like I ain't gonna tell y'all how to dress every day so you can feel safe, but I'm gonna start wearing a cap and gown everywhere I go. <laughs> Until things cool off for a little while. You ain't never felt threatened by somebody in a cap and gown. Not never. Cap and gown is like a wedding dress. You see somebody wearing it, it make you happy. It change your mood. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do. Until we get some real police reform, I'm wearing a cap and gown every day with a, with a, like a, with a middle school diploma in my back pocket. <laughs> a middle school diploma and an engagement ring. It's gonna be the saddest <laughs> story. Cause you ain't gonna sweep me under the rug. <sighs> Cause this was crazy. We live in a time now where if you get shot on the wrong day, you might not even make it in the news. Mm. They'll sweep your story all the way to the back page. Damn that, I'm gonna be on the front. But if the police shot a 40 year old eighth grader, I promise you, <laughs> it's gonna be a conversation about me. Oh man. Y'all better ride for my ass. Oh, we riding with you, bruh. <laughs> In another news today, police shot a 40-year-old eighth grader. <laughs> he survived by his three ex-wives and six children. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Send a prayer up for Mr. Charles. Oh, man, he's funny with that one, though. Graduation. Pay cops every day. more money. Money is part of the solution. It ain't the only solution, but it's part of it. Here's the thing, we love to act like all these good cops just gonna all step up and do the right thing together. Please, most people don't do the right thing for the right reason. They do the right thing for the right price. Oh, It's about the real. money. And don't get me wrong, there's plenty of good cops out there, man, but not enough to affect change. You gotta do something to incentivize. 
You got to break bread. And don't, and don't tell me you ain't got the money to pay cops more. Every time somebody get hit over the head, you got to pay a settlement. So take the money you would have paid for a settlement and just put that in the cops' pockets. And they might care a little more. At minimum, just set up a snitch fund. Can we do that? <laughs> snitch fund. Now, okay, don't pay every cop more. Just the cops who snitch on the other cops. That's oh, okay. who you pay. 100000 100000 per snitch. Uh, you got police departments paying 200, 300 million a year. You put 100,000 per day. I, I promise you, if you started giving cops 100,000 to snitch on other cops, they would be arresting each other at roll call. <laughs> All right. Immediately. You, you wouldn't even make it out the police station in the morning. Put your hands up, Sanchez. <laughs> I saw what you did, Sanchez. I gotta get 100,000. Shit, I need 200,000. Arrest me too, Sanchez. <laughs> We got to go down. <laughs> Put a hundred thousand on it. It'll change everything. I promise you. Because you ain't going to break through that thin blue line just off of morals. Mm. Real cops don't snitch on other cops. Real cops stand tall. You ever, you, you ever notice all that brotherhood fraternity shit? It's for jobs where you're underpaid and nobody appreciates you. So, <laughs> so it, it, it's cop and school teacher and military, it's uh, firefighter. It's all these jobs uh -huh. where you do dope shit, but no one respects you. So they've tricked you into thinking that fraternity is a substitute for currency, and it ain't. Mm. Pay them. Give them some money. That's okay. Because here's what happens. You start giving cops more money to snitch on each other, it's a good paying job. Anybody with a good paying job knows you snitch immediately. <laughs> Ain't no brotherhood in a job that pay you a real wage. People snitch left and right. You ever notice doctors don't stick together? Hey. Doctors hey. snitch on each other in a heartbeat. <laughs> Every year in this country, somebody get the wrong leg chopped off or <laughs> the doctor leave a butter knife inside you. Oh, hell no. It ain't a bunch of doctors in the emergency room talking about real doctors don't snitch on other doctors. We're still like, no, that nigga chopped off the leg. Come get his ass. And she gave him too much anesthesia. You get over there with the doctor with your stupid ass. <laughs> You're a fool for that. <laughs> Shit, if you was giving police 100,000 per snitch, I'd become a cop. Uh-oh, uh-oh. For real, I'd be the first millionaire rookie police officer. <laughs> first day, snitching, everybody. I don't give a damn. Not only would I snitch, I'd brag about it. I'd be a proud snitch. I'd be in the club, VIP, bottles, just, yeah, good, what's up? I'd be out there snitching, what's good, boo, you good? <laughs> Give a damn, it'd be a family tradition. Find out my son going to college. I kick in his door. What's the shit I hear about you trying to get an education? <laughs> you ain't going to college, boy. I'm a snitch, your mama's a snitch, and you gonna be a goddamn snitch. Yes. Yeah. That's right, you got to make snitching a tradition. You gotta make it something flashy. You got to show people that doing the right thing isn't something to be embarrassed about. We gotta make snitching great again. <laughs> that might not be the best slogan. <laughs> I'll work up. We'll workshop that. No, we'll workshop it. Oh, that's the end of it, huh? All right. We'll go through the whole thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, man, that's gonna be a wrap on part one. Well, my man was talking about some real stuff, man, you know, can't argue with that. But now here comes the unpacking, shall we? <laughs> All right, that was Roy Wood Jr., y'all, with uh, No One Loves You, part one of this stand-up comedy special. Well, let's get right to it, man. Um, I, I'm not really a good American. <laughs> At least not by my standards anyway, but I'm certain every I'm certain everybody else's. Um <clears throat> I always had the brain of an extremely curious person. I was never satisfied with anything that I was ever told from anybody. Okay, and that's down to the to the to the last person in my life, man. 
And even my my grandfather, man, he rest in peace, man. <clears throat> I didn't even take seriously everything he said. And he's the one person in this world that I respect more than anybody, all right? So what does that tell you? But, <clears throat> you know, one thing that I uh, did not take seriously at all from a young age to this very day that when I'm sitting here in this chair, I don't care about patriotism. Uh, I don't care about the American flag. I don't care about the national anthem. I don't care about those things, all right? Um, for some reason to me, um, taking that serious not only made my life uh, not so good at all, but you know, it, it just it, it just really highlighted some things that just really bugged the living hell out of me. Like uh, patriotism was, th was something that bugged the hell out of me. Um, the national anthem, the pledge of allegiance, and all that stuff. Um, what else used to bother me a lot? Authority figures bugged the hell out of me because one, they always tell you respect authority, but authority can lie too. So what's the point of respecting them just just because you say so? No. Uh, <coughs> I just I don't understand what's the big deal with it. You know, it's a, I I'm reminded of something that George Carlin said one time in one of his specials. He said that he doesn't get all choked up about. Um, uh, American flags. He said ribbons and flags. He says, um, let me see if I remember this right. Hopefully I said it right. He said he considers them to be symbols and he leaves symbols to the symbol minded. <laughs> I love that line, man. You know, I just, nobody is running this country correctly. You know, I'm, I doubt they ever will. You know, and so the, the fact that no one's running the country correctly, but you, ex but you expect the citizens to run their lives correctly, you know, it's kind of like a, a hypocritical thing. You know, even though they say that, you know, uh, the politicians are elected by the people, I don't believe in elections either. You know, I mean, I'm not on some conspiracy theory nonsense, but I just don't think it's 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 worthy. You know, I think us, the citizens voting for who our leaders are is one of the most ignorant things I've ever heard of. And I'll tell you why, because the average citizen is not very intelligent. By a long shot, you know, I fall in that category as well. You know, I only have a 10th grade education. All right. That's because I got thrown out of every school I was ever in. I didn't uh, respect authority because they didn't do a good job and all this other stuff. So it's kind of like if, uh, if, if you give me uh, the right to vote, I'm not going to vote based on anything that matters at all. You know what I'm saying? And I don't care about um, I don't care about any president down to the very last one. I don't care about voting. I've never voted in my life. And it's just something that you add it all together. I think that if 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 uh, if patriotism, voting and, you know, uh, politics, if all this stuff really matters, then people uh, would really just know who the right person was, the best person was for the job and just let them in. You know what I mean? The hell with all this voting bullshit. But, uh, you know, that, that's you know based on my limited knowledge of things. You know what I'm saying? That's another reason why I shouldn't vote for nobody. But, uh, yeah, I don't care about the national anthem, man. The fact that it was made such a big deal of, you know, with the whole thing started with, like, Colin Kaepernick, you know, and all that stuff. It's just, yeah, I, <laughs> you, you took it upon yourself to care too much about that. Please, man, you should be ashamed of yourself. But, um, you know, the whole thing, too, about what he said, though, I, I'm conflicted about a lot of this stuff, you know. I don't believe that people dying in wars gave us the ability to do what we do here. I mean, and another thing is based on my limited knowledge, you know, but... For some reason to me, and I, I'm pretty sure someone else has said this before, but like, if you are um, a politician and you're passing laws and you're deciding uh, when we go to war and all this stuff, then I always used to wonder, just like other people did, how come you ain't sending your kids to war? You know, how come you ain't strapping on a gun and going to war yourself? You know, you want to you want to put other people in 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 in, in another country to die? Hmm, I don't appreciate that, man. You know, there's plenty of ways to get a message across without killing somebody, you know? Uh, I don't think anyone really knows how to do that anymore because someone can't wait to just click, click, blow somebody's head off. But uh, yeah, I just don't care about any of that stuff. I never have. Uh, it's never made sense to me. And uh, until it starts making sense, I'm going to stay exactly where I'm at. I'm not giving a damn. But, um, you know, what he said about what to do with the national anthem and stuff like that, that that's funny. That's cute and all that. But, you know, it's just telling jokes, you know? So I'm not going to read and chime in on that one. But, uh... What else, man? Um, I will say this, though. If you're going to talk about police officers, teachers, and like what he was talking about, fire department and all that stuff, yeah, I, I personally don't understand why these professions get shit pay, but yet 
um, a professional athlete is getting paid gazillion dollars just to play a game, you know? Now, granted, I love sports, you know what I mean? And I think that, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of sports. I take sports really seriously, you know, but um, the, the amount of money that professional athletes get paid as opposed to a very important position like a teacher or a police officer, fireman and all that stuff, it's, um, it, it, it's insulting to the point where you're just sitting there like, doing this gesture the whole time. Like, what the hell are we doing here, you know? So I've never been in favor of that. And plus, uh, the amount of money that they give these athletes, and some of them just tank their careers because they happy they got paid, you know? Imagine how insulting that is. You're somebody who's busting your ass playing the game you love to get a large contract because you work so hard, and as soon as you get your money, all of a sudden you forgot how to play. <laughs> That's happened with a lot of athletes, and I don't appreciate that at all, man. Matter of fact, I hope somebody kicks your ass out the league today if that's what you're doing. But uh, yeah, man, uh, it, it would give people um, better people in, in these positions. Like I said on another video, man, I don't respect the education system either. I went to public schools, all my teachers, with the exception of maybe one, two, maybe three, maybe. All of the teachers suck ass, man. They don't know what the hell they're doing. They don't know how to get education in the kids' heads. They didn't uh, take responsibility with their students failed. They didn't hit up the parents and be like, hey, I wanna you know, get a study group together and all that stuff. I mean, like, no one did anything, man. That's how terrible teachers were. And I heard someone else say, like, um, I don't know if I'm getting it right, but someone said something along the lines of, hey, well, you get what you pay for, right? And that goes for the teachers the police and whatever else, you know? Uh, if, if these are positions where uh, they can uh, make things better, you know what I mean? I, yeah, put the best people for the job in those positions, you know what I mean? But they don't have that. So I don't respect police officers. I don't respect judges. I don't care about the CIA, the DEA, the ATF, the whoever else acronym. I don't care because no one's doing their job right. I don't break laws like insane. I'm not a murderer, I'm not a drug dealer, I ain't no rapist or nothing like that. So it's just like, the fact that I've been screwed with as many times as I have, you know what I mean, by the police, man, it's not cool, man. It's like, I used to go out there and just look at police officers sometimes when they mess with me over something like traffic tickets. And granted, that was my fault and I deserved the tickets and all that stuff. But it's just like, there's someone out there raping their kids right now. There's someone out there killing people right now, you know, and, and, and they're hiding in plain sight and you messing with me. <laughs> now, that doesn't absolve me of my irresponsibility, but you guys get what I'm talking about. But um, the last part, though, and I'm going to cut it off right uh, after I say this, the snitching thing, you know, <sighs> snitching is, is a confusing thing for some people to wrap their heads around. And what I mean by that is fairly simple. Uh, snitching to me is something, is a piece of information that either everybody wants to know or nobody wants to know. And whoever lets it out is going to excite a bunch of clowns or piss off a bunch of other people, you know, that just ain't down with that. I just don't think that you should out somebody because it, it, it helps you. You know what I mean? I don't personally think that's right. You know, like if you're just going to like see somebody doing something that don't affect you and you just go in and tell on them and then they end up getting in trouble somehow, end up going to prison. I hope your ass gets shot. <laughs> I remember, man, I was doing this uh, programming for um, that. I got set up through courts to pay off some traffic tickets. And then this one dude who was in charge of it basically told the whole class, yeah, you better tell. You better snitch. You know, and I'm just sitting there like, Ugh. and if you had a conflicting opinion about it, he would kick you out. You know, he would say, oh, nope, not getting your traffic fines paid off. Shut the hell up. It's like you had people had to sit there and deal with it. You know what I mean? Like I didn't comment at all just because I don't care. Like I said, but as long as nobody snitch on me, I'm cool. But uh, overall, man, uh, I just think that people really need to start doing the right thing, not because of what the right price is. Like he said, too, I don't I don't get by with that. There's so many opportunities in life that I had to take advantage of something to get paid, to get, you know, good times with the ladies, anything. I don't do that because I'd rather go without than to uh, sacrifice my integrity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know that probably sounds a little corny, but hey, man, it is what it is. But yeah, man, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off right there, y'all. Um, thank you one more time uh, to Miss Ema Catherine Maya for suggesting this one. Uh, we on part one, and we got a few more parts to go, and I already like what he's about in this special, right? He's talking about some world issues and all that stuff, 
and um, he's making it funny, but at the same time, I'm hoping he's making y'all think as well. So yes, thank you very much, Miss Ema Catherine Maya, for uh, suggesting this special to me. And we got one part down, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut it off right there. One more time, Roy Wood Jr. with No One Loves You, part one of this stand-up comedy special. And if you like that reaction, please like, comment, and subscribe to your boy. Keep everything going, like I always say. So uh, yeah, man, uh, part one of this special in the books, man. Um, I'm, I'm glad that I kept this whole concept going, you know. Um, there's so many different uh, stand-up comedy clips out there, you know, that sometimes I forget that uh, some of these clips don't have whole specials attached to them, you know. You'd be like, hey, yo, what else is a part of this special that I'm not seeing? And then you gotta go down this uh, area where you gotta locate and locate, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, man, um, I'm glad I kept this going, and uh, I'm gonna keep going. Is uh, as long as I can until I run out. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's going to be Eddie BTV signing off. One more get here. Uh, part one of this special in the books, like I said. And uh, yeah, I, I like uh, serious issues that can uh, get inserted into stand-up comedy like this, you know? Like, I've been a fan of always making the most traumatic thing funny just to like help my own sanity or help somebody else's. But you know, the more that we talk about these issues, the more we're not put, push them off to the side and you know, they end up being worse, you know? But damn, they still end up worse anyway, uh, regardless of who's trying to help. <laughs> That's a shame too. So yeah, man, thank y'all for tuning in uh, one more time to this one, man. I had a lot of fun getting to this one. Uh, we got three more parts to go, and uh, next Tuesday we will continue on with this one. So, yeah, until next reaction, love and appreciate y'all. Peace.